Yes, they have. I've just come from the capital here to uh, this live position a few streets away. But what's happening there right now is the National Guard are now clearing that area and the D.C. police are clearing the area. They're clearing the steps and they're, they're going through inside the capital, room by room, to re-secure it. The place is meant to be a citadel and yet protesters managed to break in today and get right into the chamber itself. It has been an extraordinary day. It is what happens when, as you suggest, you unleash chaos. What happened today was unconstitutional in the extreme. One of the glories of the American system and the American Constitution is this peaceful transfer of power. It was the first constitution in the world to do that. It was the legacy of George Washington. He was the first world leader, if you like, to give up power um, without a fight or without having to be deposed. What happened today was that Congress was supposed to be certificating or giving the, the, the formal acceptance of the election result. Mike Pence, the vice president, president of the Senate, was opening all the envelopes of all the different votes from the different states, uh, which would end in the day, end the day with Congress affirming that Joe Biden will become president on the 20th of January. Now, what happened before that is, uh, before that could start, was at 11 o'clock this morning, the president outside the White House had a rally of his supporters. Uh, they had flown in from all over the United States, and they were ready to act on his direction. He told them that the election had been stolen from them, from him and from them. And then he said something that was quite extraordinary. He told them to march on the Capitol, where congressmen and women were going to be going through their constitutional duty to mark the handing over of power, which will take place on the 20th. So about one o'clock this afternoon, that large crowds arrived. I was there. They were marching on the Capitol. I, I, I saw some people who were very much ready for trouble. They had um, fortified gloves on, they had helmets on, they had boots on, they had lots of paramilitary regalia, no, no guns, I should say. And then they stormed the Capitol. They went up the steps. They went through lots of different uh, doors. There was the stench of tear gas. And I'm told that one of the ways that they got in was deploying sort of bear mace on the police inside the Capitol. They got, they got managed to get all the way in. Um, and then there was a, there was a shot. Um, what happened there, I'm not sure. I've been told that a young woman was shot and, and is, it has been injured, and that has been reported by US networks. I can't confirm it. But I can say that when I was told, where I was told the woman had been shot, um, I went there, and there was blood there. There was a trail of blood, and it was there. I can't say any more than that. Um, many of these people, as I said, contain, came uh, prepared for trouble, and that's exactly what happened. Since the trouble kicked off, um, we've heard very little from President Trump, who remains in power, let's remind viewers, for another 13, 14 days. Uh, but in the last few minutes, he did put out this statement. Let's just show you a short clip of it. I know your pain. I know you're hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. It's a very tough period of time. There's never been a time like this where such a thing happened, where they could take it away from all of us, from me, from you, from our country. As you hear there from the president, weaving two messages together, one, go home, but at the same time, you'll notice he still maintains that the election was stolen and that the people have been denied their rightful and legal choice. He has whipped up a lot of people into believing that Congress has the power to overturn the election, that Mike Pence, as the vice president, the person who un, uh, 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 opens all those envelopes with all the results in it, he would have the power to just set them aside and declare Donald Trump the winner. He's made it clear that he believes it's a matter of personal loyalty that Mr. Pence should do that. And yet, when the Constitution continues to, to grind towards the inevitable, which is Joe Biden takes over for, on the 20th, Mr. Trump is extremely angry, and so are his supporters. I spoke to many of them on the Capitol steps today who told me they believe that they are the ones who are the righteous people 
uh, standing up against tyranny. They are part of a revolution against an illegitimate force in the United States at the moment. And it's easy to think, David, that this is just a sort of a, a, a mob on the outside. But that attempt to unseat democracy was also going on inside Congress uh, with a handful of Republicans who were trying to overturn the result. Tell us what you heard in those speeches. Well, what we heard was a few people suggesting that there was a way to overturn the election result. But we also heard from a significant number of Republicans who really do not like what's happening. Remember that re Republicans are a big mix. They're not just President Trump supporters, although many have aligned themselves with President Trump. There are many conservatives in the Republican Party who maintained that the police should be respected and they venerate the Constitution. The United States Constitution is, is, is something that they believe is as near perfection as human thought and human government has ever reached. So to see people trashing the Constitution in a way by, by not allowing the peaceful transfer of power is painful to them. Reince Priebus, you'll remember him, he was the former chief of staff to President Trump. He said, Many of the people on the steps today were domestic terrorists. And Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell, who's the leader, Mitch McConnell, the leader of the uh, Republicans in the Senate, um, described this as a poisonous path. Now, previously, Mitch McConnell has been very supportive of President Trump. You'll remember he, he led efforts to prevent him being impeached. Um, and, uh, so it, it's clear that a lot of Republicans are very, very uncomfortable. And there's a big move among Republicans tonight to get Congress back in session tonight so that the Constitution, this deadline of the 6th of January to certify the election result, can happen. They want to sit through the night to make sure that that happens. David, thanks very much. I think we'll probably be back to you uh, if things kick off there. And we know that the uh, scenes are pretty volatile. Um, but right now, let's go to our guests. What will be the impact of this on the Biden presidency? And what will Democrats hope to achieve? How is the Republican Party feeling about their president right now? Joining me now, Alice Stewart, the former communications director for Ted Cruz for president. Uh, and we hope to be joined shortly by um, a Democratic congressman as well. Alice, if I can turn to you, uh, you your response to the scenes that we've witnessed in Washington tonight. Um, devastated and disgusted, quite frankly. Look, this is not how America exercises our democracy. We exercise our democracy when we voted on November 3rd, and we voted for the person that represented our views, our values, and our policies. And, and look, as you said, I'm a Republican. I voted for President Trump. But I also recognize the fact that he did not win. The will of the American people was for President-elect Joe Biden to win. And so I am happy, not thrilled about the fact, but I am happy to see America progress into the stage where let democracy unfold. Let's have a peaceful transfer of power to President-elect Biden. Look, the unfortunate thing we have here is for some reason, uh, President Trump just refuses to acknowledge the truth that he lost. And he continues to say that they did not lose and this was a fraudulent election and there was widespread voter fraud. And I, what I think is unfortunate with what we had here today was that this was all a figment of President Trump's imagination with regard to uh, fraudulent ballots and uh, voter fraud across the country. And for him to invite these people to, uh, our nation's capital, which is right across the river from where I am right now, and to speak to them as though this election was not valid and to encourage them to go down to the Capitol. And then as the violence breaks out, to tell people to go home, it's really unfortunate. And this is really not how American democracy generally plays out. And it's unfortunate that uh, on the world Alex. stage, this is what people are seeing. Yeah, help us to figure something out, because when you're watching these scenes, you, you can't decide whether this is, if you like, um, the fiery end of Trumpism or whether it shows that his supporters will double down and cling on for dear life and he will be a force that remains. How do you see it? Well, clearly, the people that have made the trip here, a lot of them came across the country to, to come here and, and not just support the president, but to be a cog in the wheel of, of this process. And those people, I 
firmly believe are not going away. They're not going anywhere and they will continue to stand by their man. There are also Republicans like myself who stand by the party and the policies and will certainly look forward to a peaceful transfer of power. And we will learn from our mistakes in this election and do things differently the next time. I Alice, think that's the most important thing. I, and I but have to ask you something because you were you, you worked very closely with Ted Cruz. You were his communications director when he was running for president. I know it seems a long time ago now, but what did you make of his actions? I mean, he was one of those who stood up in Congress today and said, we're going to challenge Joe Biden as the next president. Why is he doing that? Would you have a word in, in his ear about that behavior? Look, I, I think there are a large number of Republicans that shared his view. I just happen to not. And the reporter just did a phenomenal job of explaining what's going on today. Congress, normally a day like today is members of Congress come together count the electoral votes and therefore pass the torch to the incoming administration. But what happened is we had Ted Cruz and several other Republicans who didn't feel as though the votes were valid and they felt as though it was important to challenge them. Look, our constitution- uh, Alice, I'm, I'm gonna be really honest. Let me just interrupt you because really it's not about whether you feel something is valid. I mean, surely we've got to get past the emotion of an election result. It's a result. It's the result that the people of America delivered. Why aren't more people in your party saying, get over it? This is not about how you feel. Uh, I wish they would, Emily. I, I think that's the, the smart thing to do and more people certainly will do so. But look, there was some very few, very rare instances of voter fraud and voter irregularities, but nowhere near the level of widespread voter fraud that many are alleging. And I think that's the important thing to keep in mind. I have a lot of faith and a lot of confidence in the integrity of America's election. But what we had today was some Republicans who felt as though the Constitution says it is Congress's role to count the electoral votes, not to challenge them. Well, their contention is that if the votes they see are not valid, they should challenge them and they shouldn't just ch uh, count them as they were legal and let, valid votes. Uh, Alice, but, uh, let me just ask you, we're going to go to Alfonso Lopez uh, from the former Obama administration in a moment, but let me just ask you, because you're a girl, if I can put it that way, from the Peach State, from Georgia, um, which was an extraordinary electoral upset, which we thought would actually dominate much of today. Those two Senate races, one we have now had confirmed by Democrats, which changes um, the whole control basically of the Senate and now of Congress towards the Democrats. Now, do you think that will make a big difference to how America's governed? We heard from Mitch McConnell, uh, who is now minority, uh, minority leader, not majority leader in the Senate, offering a, a vague sort of olive branch there. It will make a huge difference because what has happened, and this is American Civics 101, is that when we have members of the House of Representatives that are um, majority run by Democrats. We have the incoming president who is a Democrat. And now we have the US Senate, which now based on the results from my state of Georgia is now in Democrat control. You have all three areas of Washington, the power brokers that be run by Democrats. What that means is that Joe Biden and his very far left policies uh, will not have uh, the firewall that they would have had before if Republicans maintain control in the Senate. Okay. Let's I happen to think that's not good. I think a divided government is good, but the people have spoken and I am big enough to stand back and say congratulations to the victor and let's get down to the business of Washington. I'm sure that will be appreciated by our, our next guest, uh, Alfonso Lopez, formerly of the Obama administration. Let me just ask you first, Alfonso, for your reflection on the scenes we've seen uh, in Washington this evening. Um, uh, thank you for having me on the program this evening. I have to tell you, I've worked uh, in and around the US Capitol since 1988, and I have been shocked and dismayed and disgusted about what I've seen today. Um, this is not what we do in the United States. This is not how we do a peaceful transfer of power. Far right Trump supporters who don't like the fact that they lost an election legitimately with, <laughs> and, and who are believing constant lies coming from this president and his enablers in the Republican Congress, 
that somehow there have been shenanigans with this election, which are have not been founded by anything. They've, they, they've had countless court cases where no nothing has ever been substantiated or supported. And the fact that this extreme wing of the Republican Party has agreed, has, has thought it was okay to do this at the U.S. Capitol is just such an embarrassment. How does, how does, America, make, say, how does America make them stop? How does this stop? Well, this is, uh, I mean, first off, let's just be honest. This is not everyone. This is a extreme group of people who have bought into the um, the, 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 the sort of misinformation from the Trump from the Trump family. And it's not all Republicans. It's not all Democrats. The vast majority of Americans are not buying into these actions. And so the fact is we have to listen. We have to be open. We have to have an open heart and open mind. And we have to um, be able to have truly communicate with each other because these kinds of actions go against everything we are as Americans, everything we stand for. And the fact is that um, this is an aberration. And it's not who we are. I keep coming back to that. This yeah. is not who we are as Americans. You, you, um, the, the, the Democrats now have control of the Senate as well as the House, as well as the presidency, or will, will do shortly. Um, Mitch McConnell's speech today struck a note, admittedly, from that position of defeat. But do you envisage a very different kind of politics going forward? Do you think that divide can now be healed, or is that naive? I deeply hope so. But we are in a position now because... The fact is that a 50-50 Senate is not, a, is not a, a carte blanche to basically do whatever you want. And it, w despite what some other people might say about socialist policies, which is simply laughable, the fact is that we have to come to the center. You have to have an agreement on both sides of the aisle, both Republicans and Democrats, to get anything really done in the U.S. Senate, um, despite budget reconciliation, despite what happens there. You have to find common ground. What happens? So there, and it's a very small majority in both the House I'm, and the Senate. I'm going to ask you both uh, very briefly, uh, 20 seconds each. What happens to the Republican Party now? Do you think it splits? Does it heal, or does it does it die and re re remake? an autopsy of this current uh, election and learn from the mistakes and what we could do better next time. But look, Trump is not going anywhere. He's vowed to primary anyone who has spoken up against him. But there are good voices and good leaders in the Republican Party. And the heart and soul of the Republican Party for limited government and fiscal responsibility is not going away with okay. President Trump. And I, I firmly believe uh, we'll come out of this. Uh, and do you, Alfonso, think President Trump is here to stay? Gosh, I hope not. I really hope not, because what he has done to what was uh, the, uh, the Republican Party is really reprehensible. And the fact is that all of his enablers and the people who, who stand with him and are supporting him and the, and the sycophants who are doing this is so wrong. It's so short-sighted about what it is to be Americans. But at the same time, I agree with the other individual on this call and that there, there are good people on both sides and the vast majority of folks okay. want to come back to regular order and they okay. want to be able to run the government the way it's supposed to be run. Alfonso Lopez and Alice Stewart, thank you both very much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.